The best graphics cards should be the primary focus of any gaming computer. Everything else should basically take a back seat. Because without a powerful GPU to push pixels, even the most powerful CPU is not going to be able to accomplish, well, anything. So with that in mind, what are the best value GPUs in 2022? We've got you covered. So whether you're looking for the graphics card with the quickest clock speed, best value, or even the best card at a specific price point, we'll go through a good list here to be able to give you a nice number of options to fit your play style and or budget. The fact that a long, dark night of GPU shortages and exorbitant prices is finally ending is really the best news of all. The profitability of cryptocurrency mining has plummeted, and last month's average price of graphics cards decreased by an additional 14%, meaning that all of the major GPUs are currently in stock at online retailers, and most of them can be bought for less than the listed MSRP. So what are the best value GPUs right now? Let's get started. The GeForce RTX 3080 The GeForce RTX 3080 from NVIDIA is equipped with the company's most recent after architecture and is touted to be $500 cheaper than the previous generation with the 2080 Ti, and it's faster by 30%. This is definitely the card you should acquire if you're serious about pushing the graphics settings to their absolute limits, and if you want to play at 4K or 1440p resolutions. It's often unnecessary for 1080p gaming unless you're trying to play the most recent games, which do enable ray tracing, which in that case, having DLSS support is going to assist and improve performance. The RTX 30 series graphics units may finally convince you to be able to hop on the ray tracing train if you pass up on the initial round of RTX GPUs. The RTX 3080 is definitely going to be your best hope for enjoying games in their ray tracing splendor without blowing a hole in your savings account because it can provide twice as much ray tracing performance as the Turing. Amphere has even included upgraded tensor cores for DLSS, a technology that's been appearing in many released video games. The speed of NVIDIA's RT and DLSS is also quite a bit faster than what you might get with AMD's new RX 6000 cards, which is a good thing, considering that NVIDIA sometimes lags in terms of traditional rasterization performance. As an alternative to DLSS, AMD does provide the Universal FSR 2.0, although it's not only available in a small number of games. For most of the previous two years, the cost of the RTX 30 has been exorbitantly inflated, but recent price drops have brought it closer to, let's just say, fairer levels. This remains our top competition for a quick GPU at the moment, even though its price might not be the lowest. The Radeon RX 6800 XT The Radeon RX 6800 XT from AMD is the top card from Team Red. The Radeon RX 6800 XT significantly improves both speed and features when compared to the Radeon RX 5700 XT of the previous gen. It also supports ray tracing via DirectX Ray Tracing or Vulcran RT. The RX Radeon 6900 XT is around 5-7% to quicker than its predecessor, but it theoretically costs 54% more. That's really not a good offer, especially considering that you don't receive any additional VRAM or other extras. The enthusiast community has finally given the Navi 21 GPU the name, quote, Big Navi, before its arrival, and we received precisely what we had hoped for. Believe it or not, it's actually twice as large as the Navi 10 and has twice as much RAM and twice as many shader cores. The clock rates have also been increased to the range of 2.1 to at least 2.4 gigahertz, depending on the card type, and AMD did manage to do all of this without significantly increasing the power requirements. The RX 6800 XT has a 300 watt TBP, which is somewhat slower than the RTX 3080's 320 watt. The huge 128 megabyte Infinity Cache is even responsible for a significant portion of AMD's impressive performance. It improves the effective bandwidth by 119%, according to AMD, and we are definitely convinced that over the next couple of years, very few games will require more than 16 gigabytes of memory, which puts the 6800 XT in an excellent position in this regard. The Radeon RX 6700 XT the RX 6700 XT and its predecessor, the RX 5700 XT, both have the same high number of GPU cores. 
However, the 6700 XT's clock speeds are much higher and it has a significantly larger cache, which results in a performance increase of about 25%. During the course of Tech Radar's testing of AMD's RX 6700 XT, the graphics card quickly reached clock speeds greater than 2.5 GHz while being used for gaming, and this was with a standard configuration of the reference card. They reached rates of 2.7 to 2.8 GHz after performing some tinkering and overclocking, and this was accomplished without the GPU becoming overheated. That is really an astonishing feat, and cards that have been factory overclocked can achieve even higher clock speeds, but at a higher price. The RX 6700 XT battled it out with the RTX 3070 and the RTX 3060 Ti in terms of performance. Because it is somewhat slower than the latter and somewhat faster than the former, the selling price is approximately $480, which is appropriate for this product. It's presently available at prices beating just below the official MSRP and costs roughly $50 less than the lowest RTX 3060 Ti while giving an equivalent performance. The GeForce RTX 3090 Ti. For some folks, the most important factor in choosing a graphics card is clock speed, regardless of the card's price. This type of user can benefit from NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 3090 Ti graphics card. The performance of the RTX 3090 Ti is only slightly better, about 20 to 30 percent, in most tasks, despite costing more than twice as much as the official starting point of the RTX 3080. Additionally, it's just 5 to 10 percent quicker than the previous RTX 3090, despite having a higher manufacturer's suggested retail price. But judging by the prices listed online, the 3090 Ti might only be a couple of hundred dollars more expensive than the 3090. NVIDIA's RTX 3090 Ti will remain the company's most powerful NVIDIA, which has said that it will do very well, and that the 3090 Ti can even bring Titan-class performance and features, specifically 24GB of VRAM, into the GeForce brand. If you simply must have the highest and latest and greatest graphics cards available, then the 3090 Ti isn't likely to surpass this until the fall. Of course, all of this is more than just about playing video games. NVLink support is included with the RTX 3090 Ti, which is perhaps more beneficial for the professional applications and GPU computizations than SLI support. A wide range of applications for the creation of content can benefit from the 24GB of GDDR6X RAM as well. Blender, for example, frequently showed 35% higher performance whenever compared to the 3080, and over twice as much as the performance as the Titan RTX. The GeForce RTX 3060. This is the first GA106 card, and although it is a significant improvement over the RTX 3050, it is still a significant step down from the GA104. It's got a 192-bit memory interface and 12 gigabytes of video VRAM. Overall performance is comparable to the RTX 2070 due to the fact that it had 26% fewer GPU cores than the 3060 Ti and inferior memory bandwidth. Therefore, after two and a half years, you can now equal the performance of a graphics card that costs $500 with an equivalent cost of $330. Unfortunately, demand does continue to outstrip availability, and the going rate for most affordable RTX 3060 cards sits in the $400 range. Still, based upon the performance that we've seen in various tests across the board, the RTX 3060 provides an excellent overall value whenever we're considering how well it performs with ray tracing in DLSS. VRAM capacity is not an issue here, and there are several situations where the 3060 begins to close the gap with the 3060 Ti. However, it never quite got there, and the 3060 Ti would be a better pick if you can locate one at an affordable price. Due to the fact that the price differentiates between this and the 3060 Ti is about $125, purchasing either one of the AMD's products is, at this point, kind of a much better deal. If ray tracing and DLSS are disregarded, however, the performance of the RTX 3060 is almost equivalent to that of AMD's RX 5700 XT, which was released 18 months after the RTX 3060. Not exactly something that would set the world on fire, but then again, it's not out of the ordinary for mainstream parts. However, when equipped with DXR and DLSS, the 3060 is even capable of competing with AMD's RX 6800. So there you have it, folks. Those are the best GPUs in 2022. 
Which one of these GPUs do you want to go after? Let us know in the comment section below, and thanks for watching today's video. If you did enjoy, then please remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel, as well as ding that notification bell so you don't miss out on any more updates from us. Until next time, guys, stay safe and stay informed.